I don't know about you, but every so often I worry about the size of strangers' brains, especially when I'm watching talk shows. But do brains really come in different sizes? And if you were missing half, naturally, or through some horrible accident, would you know? Let's clear something up first. It's not how big it is that matters. Yep, brain size is not actually a great predictor of intelligence. Want to know the vertebrate with the biggest brain to body mass ratio? It's the shrew. Men, on average, tend to have larger brain volumes than women. But this may be a result of their generally larger body size. And Neanderthals also had larger brains than modern humans. And while they may have been great at making cave art, they certainly aren't what springs to mind when you think of a genius. So, it seems that what you do with it is more important than how big it is. And strangely enough, that seems to hold true even if you're completely missing large portions of it. In 2014, scientists realised that a 24-year-old Chinese woman had actually been born completely without a cerebellum, the bit of the brain at the back of the skull that coordinates and regulates the activity of your muscles. But she seemed to have been living fairly happily, all while missing a part of the brain that animals have had since we first decided backbones were a good idea. Our friends over at BBC Future have actually written a whole article about this, which I'll link to in the footnotes. People like this lady, or the case of a man who had a tapeworm burrow straight through his head, show just how little we understand about how our brains work and which bits are essential. The brain is clearly very flexible, and key tasks seem to be supported by lots of different areas. Now, Half of what I love about science is finding out how we actually came to know all this incredible stuff. And in the case of brain science, a lot of this knowledge comes from really, really unfortunate people. You see, it's just very hard to get ethics committee approval to knock out half of someone's brain and then see what happens. Instead, neuroscientists have to be patient and wait until the person with the right injury comes along. One of the first and most famous of these people was Phineas Gage, a handsome railroad foreman. Gage's life was changed forever in 1848 when a tamping iron, an inch wide iron rod used for tapping down gunpowder, was sent flying by an explosion straight through his head. Now it exited the back of his skull and landed several feet away, and helpful bystanders noted that it was greasy with his brain tissue. The poor guy was rushed to the doctor and incredibly survived, but his personality had changed. Previously a reasonable chap, he now spoke words that were described as the grossest profanity and apparently had little deference for his fellows. Gage gave us an insight into what happens when you get rid of parts of someone's brain. His case was the first to suggest a link between brain trauma and personality change. Doctors were especially interested because he'd injured his frontal lobe a part of the brain that they had previously thought just didn't really do much. We now know that the two frontal lobes actually contribute to almost every activity in the brain and are especially important in impulse control and in making plans for the future. Recently though, people have been questioning how important any one area of the brain really is. After all, even Mr Gage somewhat recovered and lived a pretty full life for a few years, travelling and working as a coachman. These case studies suggest that the brain is plastic, which, no, does not mean that it's made of Lego, but rather that it can reshape and rewire itself to get around changes. Essentially, it's regenerating. In fact, the brain may be even more malleable after injury. Neuroplasticity is a really exciting field. We're finding out just how much brains can change, and how everything from gaming to running can reshape your brain. Maybe we've even done that here on BritLab. In which case, I am so sorry. The moral of this story, though, is that brains are pretty amazing. They can adapt and work around almost anything. So thank your brain today, however much you have of it, because it might not be the same brain as when you check in on it in even a week's time. So what do you guys reckon? Do you think your brains have changed in the last weeks or months or years, and why? Pop it in the comments below. Let's uh, have a bit of a natter about it. Subscribe if you want more BritLab in your life. And if you're interested in brain ticklers, have a look at my previous video on Deja Vu. Have a look at my previous video on Deja Vu. Had to, didn't I?